McDonald's is one of the most recognizable brands in the world. It operated and franchised a total of 40,275 restaurants worldwide in 2022, which is an increase from 40,031 restaurants in 2021. The company has continuously seen yearly growth in restaurants for the past 17 years. Last year, Golden Arches made a staggering revenue of over 23 billion US dollars. Without a doubt, McDonald's dominated the fast food industry in 2022 with the highest brand values. McDonald's commanded a whopping $196.5 billion valuation. However, not many realize that the company has been struggling with its core business and may be under the threat of extinction. So in this video, we'll talk about the problems McDonald's faces, which could bring the most profitable fast food chain to its demise. But before we move on, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so that you always stay informed on the most fascinating economic topics. The most significant crisis that McDonald's faces right now is not new, but rather has been since the establishment of the brand. Approximately 93% of McDonald's restaurants worldwide are owned and operated by independent local business owners. So the disagreement between corporate and franchise holders can, in fact, ruin the business as the brand is on the shoulders of smaller firms that are actually running the restaurants. In the 2022, the corporation introduced significant changes in the company which caused severe discontent among thousands of franchise owners. The company has announced that it will conduct stricter reviews of current franchisees every 20 years to ensure they meet the required standards to keep their restaurants. The review process will now consider factors such as customer complaints and performance history when franchisees apply to maintain or expand their restaurants. Some franchisees have expressed surprise at the changes and believe that the company's actions are excessive. The main goal was to improve operations and retain only the best operators within the system. The company also aimed to free up some stores to make room for new franchisees as part of their initiative to recruit a diverse set of fresh talent. To achieve this, McDonald's introduced a program called PACE, which stands for Performance and Customer Excellence. This program is run by third-party companies to assess the performance of the operators. McDonald's has already been implementing this program in various global markets. Franchisees have raised concerns about the surveys claiming that they're biased and do not represent the views of all their customers. They argue that the company had promised that the surveys would not be used to set franchising standards, but only to identify trends in areas for improvement. A survey conducted by the National Owners Association, an advocacy group representing 1,300 of McDonald's more than 2,400 franchisees, revealed that 98% of respondents felt that McDonald's leadership should have consulted and collaborated with owner leadership before announcing franchise changes. When asked if senior corporate management at McDonald's had the best interests of the owners in mind when approaching franchising, 95% of the respondents answered negatively. Around 400 franchisees took part in the survey, representing roughly 17% of owners. Unsurprisingly, some restaurant owners have expressed concerns over new performance-based standards, stating that they will add more pressure on workers and operations. National Franchisee Leadership Alliance, which represents U.S. McDonald's operators, requested that the implementation of the new rules be postponed until June 2023 instead of January 1. However, McDonald's has rejected the request. McDonald's has been exerting more control over its franchisees while also denying that it is a joint employer, which absolves it of much of the legal liability for any actions taken by franchise owners, such as one by the National Labor Relations Board that determined that McDonald's is not responsible for labor violations at its franchises. This decision was the result of a case that began in 2012 when franchise workers filed a complaint with the NLRB, alleging that they were terminated for union organizing activities. McDonald's argued that it could not be considered a joint employer and, and therefore was not liable for any labor violations. 
The joint employer definition was expanded in 2015 under the Obama administration to hold corporate owners accountable for labor practices at franchises and mandate their participation in union negotiations. However, the threshold for being considered a joint employer was lowered in 2018 under the Trump administration, which was seen as a victory for corporate owners. In 2019, McDonald's was able to reach a settlement with franchise workers after the NLRB ruled that it was not responsible for unfair labor practices at independently run restaurants. Although the Fast Food Workers Committee appealed the decision in 2021, the settlement was upheld in April 2022. This means that McDonald's has not been held responsible for using child labor at one of its franchises. Speaking of which, child labor in McDonald's restaurants has been a significant concern. The U.S. Department of Labor investigation revealed child labor violations in three McDonald's branches in Kentucky. Two 10-year-olds were working unpaid, and in some cases until 2 a.m. The three franchisees responsible own a total of 62 McDonald's locations across Kentucky, Indiana, Maryland, and Ohio, and were found to have employed 305 children to work beyond legally permitted hours and perform job tasks that are prohibited by law for their age. As a result of the violations, the franchisees have been issued civil penalties totaling over 200,000 US dollars. In recent years, according to Restaurant Business Online, McDonald's has changed the way it interacts with franchisees. The corporation has reduced the number of district managers who work with operators, which means that these managers now oversee more restaurants and more franchisees. Consequently, they tend to rely more on enforcement and data than on building relationships, which has created tension with operators, according to the association. The remodel project was ambitious, with McDonald's aiming to refurbish all of its restaurants by 2020. This is a big undertaking even though the company is covering 55% of the cost. For instance, the fast food giant announced in mid-August 2018 that it would be undergoing a nationwide makeover costing over $6 billion US dollars. The makeover would include technological upgrades such as digital kiosks for ordering, digital menu boards, and designated parking for mobile app users. The company also planned to update the exterior design of its thousands of US restaurants. Of course, McDonald's franchise owners are responsible for part of the cost of the makeover. Franchise owners were burdened with 75% of the cost of refurbishments, while McDonald's covers the remaining expense. This implies that an older McDonald's location may need to spend nearly a million dollars per location to comply with the new policies. In contrast, newer restaurants may need a few hundred thousand dollars per location to meet the update requirements. Lastly, the harsh economic conditions and increasing crime rates are adversely affecting many McDonald's businesses across the United States. For instance, the CEO of McDonald's, Chris Kambenski, has expressed his concerns about the rising crime rates in Chicago, where the fast food giant is headquartered. Kambenski believes that the surge in crime is impacting the company's restaurants and making it challenging to recruit corporate talent. Speaking at an event at the Economic Club of Chicago, he stated that crime is seeping into every quarter of our city, that there is a widespread sense that Chicago is in crisis. He also noted that McDonald's restaurants in the city are suffering, given that there are approximately 400 of the chain's locations across Chicago. According to the National Owners Association and franchisees, cash flow for McDonald's franchisees decreased by over 100,000 US dollars per location last year, despite a 5.9% increase in same-store sales. The fourth quarter saw a 10.3% increase in sales, but food costs rose even faster, resulting in a decline in cash flow. Recent federal data shows that wholesale food costs rose 14.3% year-over-year, while labor and energy costs also increased. This means that despite menu price increases of 10%, franchisees are receiving less money per sale. In short, while customers pay more for their food, franchisees struggle to maintain profits. Unsurprisingly, in 2021, more than 1,700 restaurants changed hands, which is a record for the McDonald's chain. 
This represents about 13% of the franchise owned locations, which were over 13,000 at the beginning of the year. Several franchisees have reported that many other operators are also interested in selling their franchises. This is a notable number of franchisees, particularly when compared to Burger King, whose transfer rate was only 6% last year, which is less than half of that at McDonald's. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and feel free to share your opinion on the subject in the comments section below.